All right guys, welcome back to this tutorial. So in the previous set of videos, we have been able to register a user and activate them. So if you haven't checked those ones out, please go check them out just so they can lead to this. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. And now if you go to our views.py, we need to set up an endpoint to log in a user. So I'm gonna create a class-based view here. So class login API view. So this is going to be inheriting from generics to so generic API view. The user is going to be sending a post request. So def post self and request, you already know. So down here, we need to get what the user is sending and then send it to the serializer. So here we can do serializer, which we are going to set up. Serializer, this is going to be equal to self.serializer class. And then we give it the data so we can do data equals user. Let's set up the user. So user is going to be request dot data, which actually is very shorthand that we can literally bring it in here the way it is. All right. So now that we pass this one in, we need to run the validate method in the serializer, which we can do with serializer dot is valid and then we raise exceptions once there is a problem so raise exceptions exceptions equals true okay so raise exception equals true all right so we need to define our serializer so here we can have serializer class this is going to be equal to login serializer all right, so let's bring that in. So let's import it from our serializers. And then going to the serializers.py, we're gonna set up a class. So it's gonna be class login serializer. We import from serializers.model.serializer. And down here, we can define our custom our fields for the for the serializer itself. So we're going to need the email, then the password. Yeah, so here we can define email because serializer. This is gonna be email field. So here, now we can define our constraints. So of course it has to be a valid email, but then we want to define like max length, cause 255, mean length, just so we can get these custom messages when we are making requests without doing a lot of validation. So mean length can be like, like four, but really it doesn't matter. As long as it's an email field, it will still be validated against being an email field. Okay, so, Another thing I want to have basically is the password. So password is going to be serializers dot char field max length sixty eight mean length. This is going to be six. All right. So once we have this, we need to make sure this is written correctly. Written correctly. So once we have this now, we need to define our validate. So here def validate. So this is where actually we do the login, the authenticate user. So in the validate, we can get the email from email equals address. Then we can do dot get email. And then let's have a fallback for empty. The same thing for the password so once we have this now we want to, to authenticate this user so for us to be able to authenticate the user we're going to import some utilities so from django contrib import auth all right so once you import auth now here we want to log in this user so you can do authent actually you can do user equals auth authenticate so it takes in a request and then the credentials. So since the request can be null, we can pass an email equals email and then password equals password. All right. So once the user exists, it's going to be bringing us the, once the user exists, it's going to be bringing us a user instance. So here we can actually check. So if not user, so that will be when a user is not there, then we can tell them that they have no account. So we can do raise serializers 
dot authentication failed. Oh, so for us, we need, we need to import actually authentication failed. So let's bring it in here. So from REST framework with exceptions, import authentication failed. All right. So now down here, we can raise authentication failed, and then we put we give them the detail. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna say something like invalid credentials try again. All right. So once we have this, we are, we now want to validate that the user's email is verified and they also are active. Okay. So here we can do if user dot oh so we can do something like if not user dot is active then we can say something like account inactive or we can say account disabled contact admin so let's check for the very for the one that's not verified so uh, we can now check for if account if not account is verified then we can say email is not verified all right so basically this will check all those cases and now if we have a user we need to to return the user details so here we can actually have return so if any of these fails it will run up to that point and then once it passes we can return some data so we're going to return the email which will be so the email is going to be user email the username can be user username then the next thing will be the token so since there are going to be two tokens i'm going to actually use the keyword tokens so this is going to be so if you come back to our model here we actually wrote a tokens method but then we didn't quite complete it so let's do that so basically the role of this method should be able to give us the two tokens for this specific user so let's import some utilities here so from rest framework with simple jwt actually it should be rest framework underscore simple jwt simple jwt the tokens <coughs> import refresh token all right so once you import this now here in our tokens method create a variable called tokens so this is going to be equal to refresh token then we say dot for user for underscore user and then the user we want will be the current instance so we pass self that's going to give us the two tokens so we want to return two things one is going to be the refresh and then the access oh it should be inside and then the access so when a user logs in we send them an access token and a refresh token when their token expires then we can refresh it using the refresh token without like logging out a user all right so here now this is going to be tokens dot access underscore token so this is an instance of an access token i'm going to convert it into a string so i'm going to do the same thing up here be only the refresh token all right so oh so actually let me rename this to refresh token because this is what contains the two so keep that keep that then make sure you substitute it for this so now you see we have this method called tokens so this should be able to return for us when we call it it should be able to return for us these two for this user awesome so in the serializer going back down here now we can do and then we can do user dot token so let's see so let's see so once we set up this i believe we can set up a url here so i'm gonna copy this this is gonna go to login 
and then we need to import our login API view. Make sure we replace it here. Okay. So if we look at our views.py again, you'll notice that here we send the data to the serializer, it does the authentication and all that stuff. But you're not actually sending back the response, which you should do here. Okay, so for us to be able to send back the response, so if this is valid actually, we can return response. And now we'll be sending in the data that the serializer sends us. So dot data, and then we can now pass a status. So this can be 200 status dot http 200 okay all right so this should do so let's go ahead and test this out and see where we are so going back to our our api documentation if i reload here oh so we have an issue so let's see so let's look at our okay 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 so we need to define a meta yeah so we didn't set up the meta so in the serializers.py here since we imported from model serializer, we need to actually set up which model it is that we want. So let's set up the class meta. So we define the model, not module. So model will be user, and then the fields. So fields, this one is gonna be a list. And of course we, have, we want the email, we want the password, we want the username too. Let's see, username. And then we are going to want the tokens, I believe. And by the way, so since we have these fields here, we can actually define them here instead. So let me actually bring these two in. So this will be username. This will be chapter. So I want to actually provide field, but then here, I don't want the user to provide a username. So what you can do, is actually make this one so read only so we can do read only equals true so same thing for the tokens so right here i'm going to have another one called tokens so this is going to be read only true and we don't need this though we can have them all right so once we have this we can actually get rid of the of these fields but I'm gonna have them in there just to have them. So I'm gonna, but I'm gonna leave them in there for now. So if you come back here and reload, you can see that the error is gone and we have our login added and it takes a post request. When we click on it, we can see that what is required here will be the, the email and then the password. And these are not required. So when we go to try it out, you can see that we, we only can supply an email and a password because here we specify like read only true. But let me show you something. If I remove this here, so the read only away and go back to the login, look at what happens. So the username becomes actually required and that's not what you want. So let me take it back, save. So once we come back here and then go to try it out, so let's say we want to log in with this one, click login. So there's an issue, so let's see. Oh, so let's see what's happening. So we're doing object, okay. So let's see here in our validate. If we do a PDB here, which will help us to know what's going on. So if we come back and now try to make the same request, we should be paused in the debugger. So now we can try to inspect user. So if we do user, we actually don't have a user meaning that this user doesn't exist. So meaning we need to move this one up a bit. So cut this one, bring it here. So let's try again. Server backup, click execute. And now you can see invalid credentials and the 401. So it was about how we arranged this. So let's now use the user that we already know we have. So in the login, I'm going to use mine, gmail.com. I believe my password was this name. So when I click execute, oh, so there is an issue. User has no attribute token. So let's take a look. 
we are doing user dot token here in the models this should be tokens okay so let's change that one oh it's a realizers can do tokens yeah so make sure we have tokens tokens here so let's try again click execute yeah so got key error expected field password maybe named incorrectly let's see so we are sending a password okay so it's saying the serializer field might be named incorrectly so let's take a look at how our password is the password is char field yeah so let's actually make this one write only just so we don't send it back to the user so write underscore only equals true all right so we have the mean length the max length we are adding it to our fields good okay let's try again and see what we have so submit and now you can see we are able to log in we get our email back our username back and our tokens so you can see in the tokens we have a refresh token and then an access token which is really good which is what we want if you enjoyed the, if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one where we start doing some crud for our expenses